So a viewer from Anoka has an interesting, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty general question, but I think it's worth asking. We spend a lot of time talking about specific bills, and we will do that this evening, and spend a lot of time talking about uh, appropriations and, and taxes and so forth. So those things are all important. But this viewer wants to know, uh, what are the sort of leading environmental issues in this session? And are there particular environmental issues that our panel uh, would like to talk about or discuss? Let's start with you, Representative uh, Marquardt. Well, I think there was one that dealt with our power co-ops that recently passed the House and the Senate, and which would have given, you know, here's our local co-ops, democratically elected, and it would have allowed them to make some decisions unilaterally, just like cities and municipals have. And the governor recently vetoed that, I think, just this week. But we tend, and this is really unfortunate, we tend to get into the extremes on the environmentalists versus the co-ops or the farmers when it doesn't need to be that way. When we can actually come together and, you know, uh, there isn't a single farmer who isn't a good environmentalist because they live off the land. And yet, I certainly understand we want clean water and clean air and all those things. And that's what everyone wants, but it tends to always and I don't know if it's the interest groups or what tend to kind of divide that. And so that's one issue, for example, environment kind of versus the co-ops. And, and uh, I, it always frustrates me that they can't get together more and, and deal with things because in rural Minnesota, our co-ops are a real foundation and fabric of providing power and being members of our communities. So that's one issue. I, I thought the... the, the the sticking point um, was this alternative dispute resolution ability, you know, between if somebody didn't agree with the decision that was made. And, and we heard some pretty good testimony. And um, I, I, I don't sit on environment. I wanted to be on Senator Root's <laughs> committee uh, so we could deal with Everybody me. wants to be on Senator Root's committee. I know. You, you <laughs> had, like, the prime committee to be on, and I wanted to be on. But <clears throat> we did bring that up in, our, in, in the public utilities side of that. And, and I had thought that folks were working toward that because that when we first heard it in our, our our committee that was the the point was you know well let's fix this alternative dispute resolution side of it at least that's how my yeah. takeaway was and apparently that didn't get done so i don't know what happened on the extreme side of it paul but it's like yeah you're correct the local the local uh co-ops you, you go and elect your people right mm -hmm. and a lot of times it's a slate i mean i have a co-op in my area too and it always comes as a slate i know two individuals that have tried to get onto that co-op board and just you know haven't been successful but it still comes down to the local control side of it but i wish they would you know come to some compromise on some of that alternative dispute resolution at least i think that's still what's holding yeah. up on the senate side i don't know carrie have you heard anything on that no, um, I think one of the biggest issues in the in the environment committee this year has been water. Whether we talk about polluted water or not polluting water or cleaning up the water or you know the impaired water or or sewer water or storm water. I mean, it seems to be the year of the water and so whatever we um whatever we talk about it seems to all re revolve around that. And we all want clean water. Mm -hmm. It's just how much money do we spend to get there? How do we spend it? We, we've we talked about buffers. Um, there's probably 20 buffer bills um, floating around trying to trying to figure out how, how we how we tweak how we tweak what the governor, you know, the governor's buffer bill. And I have to tell you that we're probably like 80 to 90 percent compliant already. So, you know, it, it needs some maybe some tweaking here and there. But for the most part, it's you know, um, we'll, we'll see what we end up with. But the one thing I am excited about is the governor has a new initiative, and I'm carrying carrying the bill because um, I really want to. Um, I, I really think that we can work with with the governor to to um, do some really good things. And he's got this 20 by uh, uh, 25 by 25, and and the idea is it's not a mandate. Um, it's an idea to go around the state and to listen from the ground up. About what's going on with the water and not a gripe session but what are you doing that's mm -hmm. making the water better that we can bring that idea to the rest of the state um, share the success stories of the state with the rest of the state um, and I think that's that's really what we need to do going forward um, don't just gripe about it just what are the solutions that we can share and that we can we can do together to reach the common goal and and I think that's a better idea it's not top down it's bottom up and that always works better yeah isn't it amazing she said the compliant piece mm -hmm. on that and, and the Anoka County uh, conservation folks were just 
came to see me, gave me their update, and they're 90.5% compliant with that carry. I didn't realize that. That's pretty impressive. And and you got you know the Anoka County area, which has got you know rural and city at the same time, but they're 90.5%. Yeah, it's amazing. The compliance so. rate is amazing. I think we do have some challenges in the farming communities in the area because in my area we have mostly lakeshore, and the lakeshore has been we worked on that for a long, long time. And so we are mostly compliant. But we do have some areas in the farm country that we need to really be responsive to their needs. And and because not one size fits all. Right. And I would just add, I, I imagine we'll talk more about buffers as we, as we get on today. But uh, <laughs> some of the some of the cities. I've got one right here, as a matter of fact. <laughs> nice segue, Paul. Well, yeah. Move it right in. Some of our cities, I think, feel the frustration uh, with the Pollution Control Agency that they have a mandate now to reduce uh, more emissions from their from their their stormwater wastewater, and the money they have to spend to reduce phosphorus, for example, by two percent is so huge, so big an amount of money, you really wonder, is it cost effective? And I think people really, we need to zero in on that and say, is this worth the expense of reducing phosphorus from 10% down to 8%, for example? It's going to be a huge cost to our cities all over the state. That's one thing I think we should look at and try to work with the MPCA and, and bring some common sense to uh, some of that rulemaking. You know, I'm just going to add on to that because that's a very good point. We. Um, there was that big report that was done, and we are bringing that report into the Water Commission, mm -hmm. and we're going to have hearings on it because at some point, what is the um, the cost to benefit? Yeah. And so we think that that's a really good. Um, Senator Newman had a bill on that, and so we're bringing that into the Water Commission mm -hmm. and uh, going to have hearings on it and really dissect that. It needs to be in another spot other than the legislature. Um, because we just can't dissect it well enough in a committee hearing. So bringing it into the Water Commission and having hearings on it, I think, is the best place for that. And it needs to be looked at very definitely. Yeah. 